So uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, I uh, operated a 50 horse uh, stable for about 30 years um, and became very familiar firsthand with the difficulties in uh, waste disposal. So I uh, went back to school, ended up getting an MBA in sustainable business, was able to study the waste management uh, throughout my uh, schooling and ended up pairing up with uh, Michael Brian Brown who's here today and uh, his company that had about 20 years experience in the um, uh, composting technology business and he was a firm believer that we could take the technology from what he was doing and bring it into the equine waste and create something wonderful. So first trip I made was over to Washington State University to tour their facility and I uh, was really amazed by the process there that um, their ASP piles that ended up creating this really quality material that could be used as bedding and they ended up using that bedding in their dairy uh, facility and having excellent results including some um, real health benefits. Uh, some of our earliest projects were with uh, EOS Ranch on Bainbridge Island which is a private stable and Fort Myers uh, Henderson in Arlington, Virginia where they have the caisson horses. So my job, I felt, was to seriously figure out how for the equine industry to turn something that was becoming a greater and greater liability uh, into uh, at least you know, a cost that could be lived with and the, the end all would be to turn it into some kind of a, a financial benefit. Uh, through the research of what was available, it really became clear that composting was the most viable solution. And uh, for most of the stables due to footprint, really a bin system or an in-vessel system was uh, what was going to make the most sense. So the pros and cons of both, uh, the bin system is obviously uh, a much smaller investment to begin, uh, but it, it takes you know, incredibly longer than the in-vessel system. Uh, it takes additional labor, um, you have the temperature issues of it not being uniform, and the odor to control. Uh, the in-vessel systems, 10 to 20 days, the product moves through, you know, it's put in every day from the, the stall cleaning, uh, comes out the other end and is ready to be used. Uh, it works with an automated, au automated auger, which, um, you know, is very quick to begin the breakdown, uh, to begin the composting process, uh, keeps it at a uniform temperature. We know that it can be, you know, the temperature is hit uh, and controls all of the odor. Uh, the con, of course, is the investment uh, in that sort of a uh, machine. So this, I'm going to skip. If any, this is actually a movie. If anybody wants to see this afterwards to understand how the in-vessel system works, um, I'm happy to show you. I'm just a little worried about getting through this on time. So uh, why this immediate mixing in the in-vessel system uh, makes better compost. Uh, again, I spoke to the uniformity of temperature, you know, get your weed seed kill. Uh, the parasite reduction, the pathogen control. Um, most importantly is this homogenous mixing uh, early which drives the composting process. Um, great drying, uh, you get a homogenous product. I actually have a couple examples of uh, uh, bedding and horse manure that comes out of this in-vessel system and I think you'll be surprised. Uh, and time is money, you know, you can run this through the system in 10 to 20 days. So another thing to realize too is, is how much less volume of material you have on site if you're able to process it that quickly. We also get in the in-vessel system about a 40 to 50 percent reduction in volume. So the comparison then was to take pelleted bedding uh, and compare it to the shavings. Um, Arlington, Virginia used pellets. Uh, Eels Ranch uses shavings. From the studies that I was able to do um, what we determined really was a 50-50 a mix of uh, the composted bedding which acted much more like the pellets and then uh, you know top dress it with the shavings. So here is a stall bedded with pellets and what you find is that it is super absorbent but the areas where it absorbs all the moisture um, is is wet right to the surface and so the horses are literally standing on this moisture 
If you get the 50-50 bedding mix, what happens is really the uh, composted material almost wicks the material, I mean the uh, moisture, excuse me, to the base of the stall, and if it's top dressed with the shavings, there's a buffer that allows the horse's skin or their hooves to be kept uh, further from that moisture. What's really interesting, we ran some tests on this, and the uh, composted material, even though it has a higher moisture content, which of course helps you with the dust, and the dust is something that, as far as horses' health or humans who are dealing with it, their health, um, great, uh, helps greatly with the allergies, the control of allergies. Um, uh, for the horses, you know, the respiratory issues that they can get from the dust from the shavings is um, it's quite substantial. So anyway, the wonderful thing is not only does it, is it wetter so it keeps the dust down, but it also has still a higher ability to absorb. Uh, the probiotic effect, you know, it's, um, it just creates this environment where there's competition with the bacteria that's creating the fungus or the, the problems with scratches or heaves or hives um, with the horses. And the reason I brought that health issue up, you know, is of course how that impacts the barn owner as well uh, in the, the financial bottom line. So we've taken all this information and then we've examined what is the best way to do it. Do we encourage collective sites in communities or do we suggest that barns take care of the material themselves? And one of the places that I was dying to go and got the opportunity was down to Wellington because it is an enormous issue. And I don't know if any of you are from Florida, um, but in this fairly small town of Wellington, they have uh, up to 15,000 horses. And on top of that is um, even a, a higher seasonal rate of horses. And right now it is being hauled off um, it's, it's really a problem because they don't even know where a lot of the material goes and then they find fields that it's been, you know, piled six feet high in. Um, anyway, so what we did uh, is create this cost analysis where we took an extremely conservative number of horses uh, for the first year. We did a, a 10 year cost model and the first year we took only 5,000 horses, um, some of them being people that want to save on hauling fees, so they might bring their own material in, others that actually sign up for a contract service to uh, take the, their material in. Um, we, you know, added to that, you know, the cost of building uh, basically an aerated static pile system, um, you know, a concrete slab with the aeration coming up through that. Um, and put in operating costs, the whole bit. I'm happy to share this in more detail with anyone who's interested, but the, whoops, how do I go back? Is that a possible thing? No, wrong way. V. Hit V. Uh, Is that forward or back, which way you want to be? Uh, there you go. Anyway, you can see that even with really conservative figures, um, because the other place where we were super, super conservative was the um, price that they would get for selling any of the compost out of this yard. Um, and we placed it at $5 a yard where, you know, research has shown that it was going for anywhere between $20 and $35 a yard as landscape material. But, you know, again, we wanted to be super conservative, so we put in $5, and uh, you can see that the net income shows you know a very lucrative number and i think it hits a million by year five so that's the collective yard um, and then uh, we did a financial analysis for individual barn owners and it's really very simple uh, there's seven key questions you know how many horses do you have what do you pay for disposal how often uh, is it hauled off and what's the volume volume of your disposal same thing for the bedding costs um, additional inputs into this analysis would be uh, people who are facing fines or have been fined um, if they have an area where they've got, you know, landscaping. Um, Fort Myers was certainly one of one of those places. They took all of their um, compost product and as they've broken Arlington National Cemetery actually into 52 segments, so that every week uh, they take compost onto a certain part of that. And so they're able to deduct all of that from their budget. 
Um, some places are putting food waste in, mixing it in with the horse manure, again, creating a marvelous compost. Um, and also just your, your landscape waste. So the usable, usable material that comes out is based on 50% uh, reduction of the volume that goes in. Um, it, it can either be used in its entirety as bedding or you can screen it as it comes out. And if you screen it when it comes out, um, you're going to get uh, shavings that are remarkably still intact. And the fines that fall through can become the soil amendment. The shavings could be used for bedding reuse. If you don't mind, I have a, a bucket. You could start passing that around for people to actually see what the 50-50 mix would look like. And I actually, I have the, uh, the compost as well. Uh, this is, you know, we have done, yeah, it did, isn't that funny? I didn't sniff it out. <laughs> um, and all of this material, by the way, has been, we have done many, many tests. Uh, if you can imagine, you know, the Army had to have testing done for their material to be put on um, federal land, uh, the park there, and uh, all of it has passed whatever testing it needed to, um, to be able to be used. So uh, we figured it's about a 40% fines that come through and 60% uh, of the larger material for the bedding reuse. Um, you know, the annual savings in that, uh, you're able to reduce your shavings bill by about 40%. It's very important that uh, we felt in this equation to use the 50-50 mix because you are introducing the integrity of the shavings back into the system to continue the uh, proper uh, bedding mixture. Um, the return on investment we've done uh, for the, the various barns uh, is, is very good and for the most part the barns that I am dealing with at this point are ones where there is you know a pain being created by the cost of disposal and uh, this is mostly for your urban and suburban barns where they are paying waste companies to haul this away and it can be up to you know $25 a yard is what I found a 30 yard vessel costing you know $800 a week to be hauled away um, so that's fairly significant um, and then uh, you know the break even these vessels are 15 to 20 year lifespan and uh, and the break even is certainly uh, coming quite early in that now the problem with it, of course, for any of these improvements is finding an ability to come up with upfront cash. And that's where we're encouraging for grant writing <laughs> for these barns to, uh, to look for available funding to help them get started. So the road to zero waste, I mean, even to the bare bones of composting, you're gonna reduce your material by, you know, at least 50%. Um, if you're willing to compost to the point where you're going to use that material in its entirety, whether it's you know compost that you can use, maybe you're on a large enough place to spread it on your fields, or you're going to use it all for the bedding, you're going to end up uh, decreasing your waste cost by 100%. Um, if you're going to use your bedding reuse, suddenly you're, you're cutting your shavings by 40%. And uh, if you have uh, leftover material, you know, the sale of that material or the decrease in the cost of soil amendment for your property will be put into that equation. And, you know, the really remarkable thing is you come up with zero waste on this product. Now, the, you know, the frosting on the cake, of course, is that you've turned your, your expense into uh, an income if you are able to sell this material. And I will tell you a couple, just how am I doing on time? Okay. Okay, um, you know, two interesting stories. Um, one is that uh, the farm on Bainbridge Island that does this, the, the gentleman there absolutely loves this process and he is able to sell his compost um, for $20 a yard. He sells it to uh, a wholesaler that goes out and sells it for $35 a yard. And when we were talking to him about bedding reuse, he said, well, why would I want to do that? Because I, I can sell this product for more than I buy my bedding for. So for him, he, you know, he's absolutely thrilled about it. Now, in a um, uh, session earlier today, there was some discussion of, well, what if the market gets saturated? And I do think that work needs to be done on, on you know, 
explaining to people the education of, of the value of compost for them. But in the urban and suburban areas, I, I don't believe that it is an issue in getting rid of it. Another example that um, does not do in-vessel, but they do their own composting is Los Angeles Equestrian Center. They have 500 permanent horses on site and they haul zero you know, amount of their waste off site. They compost it there, they sell it by the truckload to um, most of it into the back of pickups for um, uh, you know, workers who are just doing landscape work in the Los Angeles area. So, that is, uh, that's it. Is there any questions? The sample you have here looks like it's got an awful lot of undecomposed shavings left in it. What, what was the carbon nitrogen ratio on that? <laughs> the gentleman right next to you will uh, answer some of the, the scientific questions for you. The, uh, on, on the product, it's about 35 to 1. So, uh, Horse manure is, is nitrogen deficient, especially horse manure bagging material is nitrogen deficient. It can be as high as 45 to 1 going into the process and we're breaking down some of the carbon. Uh, so typically it's, it's, it's on the high side. If you refer to the last lecture, he's looking for a smell amendment that's in the range of 16 to 18 to 1 to not raw nitrogen in the soil. This product would raw uh, nitrogen, uh, so you really want to use it as a surface application of the mulch. Landscape mulch more than Yes, yes, correct. Okay. Let's move on. They screen the large wood particle out of the machine ratio is better. But it's going to be a problem. Did, yes. you, did you actually install a unit in Florida? No, we haven't. We are we're trying to figure out. There's we have many options and we're trying to figure out which which way to step. And they're they are um, we're working with the um, the both the government agency down there that's working on the equines and a, a, a community group. And they're they're trying to figure out whether what is the best a collective yard or you know for the individual barn owners. The other challenge with Wellington is there the Lake Okeechobee watershed area. And they have a state standard now. They get 10 ppg uh, phosphorus in their surface water, and so you can bet that you know 10 